Well, look, it's Saturday morning, and I've um, I got I fixed the four-wheel drive on the John Deere 1640 the other day, and the video's out on that now. And while I'm waiting to do the 2030 John Deere. I thought I'd just use the 1640 as a slashing tractor. And look, it's a great tractor. I was going to sell it, but I'm pretty um, pretty sure I'm going to keep it now. It's just a handy thing around my little place here. So this slasher, or topper, as you might call them overseas, this is one I made, look, over 10 years ago now. And when I made it, I had the top folded out of 6mm, which is quarter inch plate. And I had the top folded so that no, there was no lips on the top here. And so any grass and rubbish could fall off. Now, it's been on the back of the 2030 for a, quite a long time now. And the tractor goes in under the shed. But this top of the shed's not long enough where I park it to keep this out of the weather. So over the time, you can see where the chains have been loose. There's, there's little bits of rust coming in the top here, little bits here. Now this was a second hand piece of plate I bought, it wasn't new. And across the front here I'm getting a few rust pits. Up here where a little bit of grass has sat on it from time to time, there's a few pits. So I've just run over it this morning with a bit of 80 grit sandpaper on, a, on an orbital sander and any little, any major little rust bubbles or pits um, there's one there I've cleaned out. Um, tried to take most of the scale off. And so I've just pressure cleaned it off. I'm going to let it dry for a little while now and make sure there's no moisture around. Um, this headstock, they're, they're actually the slasher, the blade bushes. So I drilled the holes out here. So these, the we have the A-frame here and the bolt and the bushes fixed firmly to the A-frame and then they pivot in these housings down here so so it's a it's a moving headstock it's, a, it's getting a little bit stuck but what we're going to put on it is this stuff now I've loved this stuff for years it's an Australian made product and um, back well when I bought me Colorado the Colorado's 2013 model First thing I did was get it up, pressure clean underneath the brand new car and a lot of chassis in that aren't painted very well on new cars so I upped it with this stuff. Now what it does, if, if you don't actually get all the rust off it um, and, and you have a slight oxidised finish, this rust conqueror um, etches in, it sort of, it likes a little bit of rust to bite into. So I've had some of this for years and, and for a while there something went wrong with the company and we couldn't get any and um, I've had this four litre tucked away and just recently I've been talking to a new supplier and the new supplier for some of the product that we're going to be, be using at Queensland Tractor Spares shortly um, it's, it's from Cost Effective Maintenance and they actually have this as part of their um, standard range. So all of a sudden I've got a supplier again. Um, it's made in Australia. Um, Global Paint Solutions. But whoever was making it, the company went a bit dicky for a while. But now um, I'm really pleased to have this stuff back again. So this is a four litre pot. I've got a, another one litre in the ute. And we we'll probably have this up on the, our website coming up. Um, I'll make that my job this next week. But some of this rust on top here, where I've cleaned it up, I've pressure cleaned it, I've run the sander over the top. There's, oh, it looks a little bit of scaly stuff there, but look, this stuff will just etch into that and eat it and seal it. And then once we've done that, we can see, so I've cleaned most of the places up. You can see the shine where I've had the sander running across the top and most of it's pretty good. So it's about 10 years old, this slasher. I don't know if I said that earlier in the video, but the next part of this process is I'm just gonna paint this Ross Rust Conqueror. I'm gonna spray it over the whole slasher. Um, it says, like I've got a couple of bits of shiny stuff here where the sand sander has, has knocked the top off there. Um, 
it, it, it prefers a little bit of rust to run into than that. But it said you can sand, wire brush it off and let it sit for 6-12 hours or overnight and let a slight oxidisation or a, um, yeah, that's that little surface rust you see on things come over it. And when we've got enough on here, it leaves a gloss finish. So what my plan is with the slasher here is run over it with x -trol, a natural etch and cure all this rust for the next 10 years at least, or 20 years, oh, who knows how long. And um, I'm going to run over it with that and then I'm going to scrummage around the shed here and see what colour paint I have. Now, John Deere green would look nice behind a John Deere tractor, wouldn't it? But look, I'm not going to go and buy any paint. I've got little bits of paint tucked away that I've had left over from jobs for years and all that, so we're going to use some of that. So There you go. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like after I've done the x troll I won't have the camera going while I'm doing it. I don't want to overspray or anything over my camera and the lens and things, so I'll come back once it's done. Okay. Here we are. I've, I've chucked a bit of x troll on it. Now you can see that shine. Now what they're saying is that shine, especially in rusty areas, if it's gone shiny in the rusty areas, you've done well. You've got it covered properly, but if it's a bit of a dull finish to it, well, it still possibly needs a bit more to soak in. And it leaves, uh, you can see where I've got a couple of runs up around the top here where I was loading her up. That's all right, I've, we're not worried about that at all. Um, but you can see it's, a, it's just a shiny coat all over. And we'll leave that dry for a day or two. And then we'll come over the top with a little bit of top coat. I don't know how this sound's going to go. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting a little, looks like I'm getting a few um, little pixels in me sound thing. So anyway, we'll see how we go with it. Um, we'll let that dry now. We'll give it 12 hours or so to settle and etch in and do its job properly. And then we'll come over the top with Oh, whatever we come up with, really. Oh, another, an interesting note is if you, um, if you're in Australia, you'll probably know Ruthie. Um, he does a lot of four-wheel driving and things like that. And if you're overseas, just, just Google Ruthie, um, Ruki, Ruthie and four-wheel drives, and he'll come up for sure. And he just built an old Land Cruiser, oh, probably 18 months, two years ago now. And this X Troll, that was the stuff he chose to seal up all his chassis and that with when it was just in the chassis stage. So um, yeah, he's, he's well known through Australia and he, um, he likes to use this stuff too. He reckons it was the best stuff to, to actually seal and, and cover up any little bits of stone chips and things like that. So there you go. We'll come back tomorrow and have another look. Well, it's early Sunday morning. It's uh, probably just a little after 7 a.m. and it's nice and dry. So I found a little bit of massy red and it was just an old tin and you know how an old tin of paint gets lumps and shit in it? Well this was, that was that can of paint. So I've strained it all this morning and run a bit around. There's a couple of little runs in it but I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, I sort of think that's a good thing on a topper like this. It's going to have grass sitting on it and around it and all that sort of thing. So that's it. I'm going to leave it for the moment and piss off up to the house <laughs> and stop fiddling with it because I'll just wreck it. Um, I'll see something and give it a little squirt or need another little squirt of paint here or something and bugger it up. So I've just cleaned the spray gun up and look that's going to do. It's got a, um, to get that red I actually had to have a couple of cans of paint, just little little leftovery bits and lumps and, but look it's come out okay, we'll just leave that alone now and look I think we've got to be happy with that. The main, um, the main idea of this job was to just seal it up. It's not for sale or anything like that. It's just because the old paint was getting old and a couple of little rust bubbles in it, the idea of this job was to clean it up, seal it up, so it'll last me another 10 or 15 years. And so with the x troll on it now and the, oh, a couple of really good thick coats, you can see how thick it is. Look at that shine. And, um, few little runs here and there. We had the Melbourne Cup race here last week so 
I thought I'd have a few runners myself. So <laughs> it looks like I've got a couple, but that's good. A nice thick coat of paint. And look, that's a good thing. I think I better go up and do a little bit on the caravan now. Okay, we're back over on the bench, trying to tidy up my workbench, so I actually had to get some of these jobs done. Now, when the hydraulic pump sits on the tractor, the long shaft goes to the back, this is to the front, and your this just slides onto the front to drive our auxiliary hydraulic pump. And it, it sits up there like that. But in the process of getting all that done, um, this idler gear here, so you have, you have your main gear that's driven here. Now, your fan runs clockwise when you look at the front of the engine, and this is a direct drive, so this drives clockwise. So you'll see my little arrow there, that means this intermediate gear goes anti clockwise, and then the pump will run clockwise. And so that's how it should, should work. We can test that by turning the pump, but look, that's just pretty well how it goes. So if we have a good look at this gear here, you can see you can see a little grey area. And you can see the gears, the gear tooth is shining across here, then grey there. So that's our that's our worn area of the gear. So there's nothing ever turned on the back of the gear. So when you know the rotation of this main drive gear, which is on the main hydraulic pump shaft, you can actually turn this gear around so that this gear now is only driving on the on the side that hasn't been used before. So if we're pushing down here, then this has got to push the other way. You, look, you still have half the gear driving. Um, the gear doesn't sit in there actually straight, but the load, the, most of the load's on this gear here. So there's very little wear. Oh, the other thing too, you can always tell which way it's going because with the the gear here is about 3 8 10 mil, oh, let's say half an inch wide. And you can see the gap or the, the wear mark there where the gear that runs on the hydraulic pump, it's the full surface. So a little bit of wear on this tooth doesn't matter. Um, the main part where these wear is that the hardening goes in the centre of the bore here. So we'll, um, this, this has a really good bore in it. So, We'll get set up and what we will do is we have to put the idler gear in and the idler pin first because the auxiliary hydraulic pump holds it in. So look all we're doing, get a bit of grease, your favourite grease, pop around inside. And look, the only reason this is getting put in there is to um, hold the thrust washers in place and hold the needles in place for assembly. So I'll just fill this little gear up here with 22 needle roller bearings I believe. I haven't looked that up, it just comes to my head with how many is there so hopefully there's 22. This is Bigfoot grease, it's actually suspension grease, but just in here, it's just not going to matter. Hopefully we can get all these needles in place and slide the shaft in. Famous last word. These needle bearings are brand new. The old ones were worn. When you've got it right, they sort of hold themselves in there. 
and on each side of that we have a thrust washer which um, it gives the thrust surface to the gear. So what I like to do is turn that around too, put the new side to the gears, to the gear I mean. That will go that way. And then just as a test, we have a new shaft, I'll put the new circlip on our new shaft and we should be able to slide that in there like that. Now, this shaft has a little chamfer on it and where the, where the pump comes through from the top there it sits up there and holds the, holds the gear in. So, come over a little bit closer and we'll I'm resting it on the teeth there of the drive gear. And look at that, straight in no kissing. Yep. So that then gives us the option of bringing the now the, the gear, all our gears, all our drive gears on the pump are good. So this thing gives us the option of bringing this auxiliary pump in here. And as we bring it in, we have to line that pump drive gear up. And I have to turn this shaft. When it's in the right place, um, everything will line up there. So now we have a spacer and the bolt. So I'll try and hold that all in there. And once we get a start, we're right. It shouldn't. Shouldn't fall off and hit the deck. There should be three bolts with spaces here. There's a little element in there, that's right. Yeah, that was an element there that was fit. Probably have to go and find one. In the meantime, Okay, so now when this pump turns, there we go there. So I'll prime this pump, I'll pop the screens out and pop a bit of oil into it and things like that. Um, we'll probably pop these out too, but I'll, I will prime the pump before we get it going. So look, I won't film the rest just for the moment. I'll I'll pull these bolts out again, I'm going to put some Loctite on them and nip them up nice and tight um, and with this Allen key I'll go and find the proper size Allen key for that because I'm just barely holding in the vise here now so um, I'll come back when I'm ready to slide it on. Well there you go, there's the pump assembled ready to go onto the tractor. Now these marks here that I put earlier are wrong. Um, I sat there, yeah, when you do something you think, oh, I don't know, something's not ringing true. And um, that was the case with this. Um, what I hadn't accounted for, I was just you know, turning the fan coming straight through the transmission, but of course where it comes into the clutch you have a reduction gear, so that reverses it. So 
this actually goes the opposite way so I didn't film it but I popped all this out again and just turned it around and that's it so yeah just um, just not thinking clearly with it all then the this little strap here that used to come around the other side to um, to keep the valve oscillating I've just tied it off out of the way here just to keep it up out of the way while we're assembling as much as anything I have a new Sparex filter that was the old one <laughs> so I don't know Plain door chuck out such a good thing eh? But, um, so we have a new screen there new needle bearings um, I've tied I've got some stainless wire and I've tied this filter in from unscrewing but it's quite tight anyway and oh this little plug here um, some of these had a square filter coming down here and it, it come in here um, Sparex with their pump supplies that now the Sparex pump that we used here is an S40875 and as you may recall when you look in here we've taken all the guts out so all of these pistons are gone they're all gone that fellow's gone and the brasses are gone so this pump should work and not rattle um, it's just a, a continuation of the drive here now I'm um, believing it's not going to cause much vibration because these are both offset and we're not travelling all that fast with it so that's about it with the pump um, the main control valve here now we, we're not going to have the lever and all that um, with the control valve sitting right back it has the valve closed and so with it closed that means that um, this this will have full suction through the valve here so when you I'll probably have to think about this a bit more before I pop it in but um, as soon as you pull this valve open here that opens the inlet so that the pump can't suck anymore but in that it's in full lift position so um, whether I should feather that open a little bit I'll, I'll have a little think on that just to get that clear in my mind well that's about it um, next time you see this pump you'll be looking down on top of it inside the 135 multi-power tractor I'll let you know what I do with this I was thinking of um, where the little needle rollers and that are here just making a little washer to hold it in a particular position but I will have to think on that um, and just make sure I've got that correct but I can change that any time if I get that wrong I can change that but I'll I'm thinking, see standard, um, well, so standard it sits down almost back in there like that and then to raise you normally bring that fella forward so anyway, I'll have a quick think on that before I go in and um, I'll let you know what I do but look that's something tidied up, I'll, I'll just go over and I'll drop that into the tractor now just so it's off my bloody bench and I can I can continue tidying my bench and throwing out all the old rooted parts. Well here you go, I've just split the tractor again. Um, I just had it sitting together just for safety sake. There's the pump sitting in the housing. I've got the line coming up here for the multi power where it pokes through the, the little hole just in there. And this little bolt here on the bell housing extension on the six inch extension that sits at the front of the housing here and holds this back into position I've only got the pins sitting there loosely at the moment and I've got the elbow sitting in at the top here now the idea of this elbow is the pump's going to be turning anyway it's going to be under no load the whole time so I'll just put that on auto focus and so we're going to pop a pipe in here and I'm going to cut that off and we're going to bend it up and have it arranged so it shoots oil at the pinion bearing the cram wheel will be 
been in a lot of oil around the place on the road but this fella here we're just going to adjust that, bend that so that it shoots oil straight straight back to the pinion bearing I've got to put a little plug in here yet so all the oil goes straight to the multi power on the, from the little multi power pump so really I've just got to put a bit of goo on there, the aviation contact cement and I'll slide him back together and I'll give you a quick look at that and there you go all back in one piece now the main drive shaft where it comes in through here we have to put a split pin through there I don't have one of them at home here so the idea is this front shaft has got a little bit of spring tension on it you just put a little bit of tension on then you drop the pin in so I can't do that just at the moment I'll grab one of them when I'm at work next but um, the trekking tractor it's all in one piece to stay, there's no reason why we should need to split it now we've got to do that front end, that's a big job, I'm dodging that a little bit but we might get brakes and brake drums put on and get this whole back end buttoned up and as you know we've got the plate made at the back so there's no PDO shaft and the PDO shaft that you can see down in there the whole idea of that is just to support the back of the pump so it's supported at the front supported at the back and supported these two pins I'll tidy them up before I finish just so I don't forget it and that's another step forward for the trekking tractor <laughs>